Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Jeff, aka Jakers, here. Welcome to an, an update video for Black Sight Files from Unsolved Mysteries. The voting for the thumbnail for the Jenny Pratt case is about to open up as soon as this video is completed. As always, if you like what you watch, you know what to do. It makes me feel good when you guys subscribe, and you will be alerted when we when I release a new uh, Unsolved Mysteries video. It's a win-win, basically, ladies and gentlemen. But anyway, Jenny Pratt is actually a very sad case. This case is also known as the 2x4 attack. I'm not going to get too much into it because this is just a, an update video and everything. But yeah, Jenny was attacked. And basically, the people uh, have not been apprehended yet, if I understand it correctly. But, that is that. Let's get on with the uh, yeah, the images, or the, 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 the candidates that I originally were looking at. Okay, so when it comes to the candidates, I had a lot of, uh, hold on, let's turn this off. I had a lot of ideas for various, uh, thumbnails to put up for, uh, for as a finalist. Sadly, YouTube only allows four, uh, total of four images when voting. So basically, I had to kind of narrow that down, but we're going to go through all the candidates first ladies and gentlemen so let's pull it up there we go okay so we have a total of 10 candidates here the first candidate sadly this is jenny pratt act after the uh the attack uh i'm not sure exactly what has happened to her we will find out more at, like if there's been any real updates but this uh this image here was taken just after she she left the hospital and she suffered some severe brain damage due to the vicious attack. Up next, we have, oh God, I can't recall his name. I think his name is Curtis Croft. This guy, this piece of shit, this, this low life, this guy uh, was Jenny Pratt's boyfriend. Uh, as you can see, he was actually, uh, uh, put. he was actually jailed before because he did some, he did, I think it was, uh, he was selling cocaine and he convinced Jenny to lie to her parents about, uh, about her boyfriend. This guy, I feel, I feel that her boyfriend, Curtis here, I feel that he knows a hell of a lot more than what he was leading on. Up next, now this is, and this is, these are, these are actors, but these, these are the, uh, people who, uh, attacked jenny and curtis basically uh, to those who are unaware jenny and curtis were on like a motorcycle and they came up and they hit jenny in the back of the head with a two by four and then this is an image of them speeding off into the darkness once again we have curtis here piece of shit i fucking hate this guy not only did he force jenny to lie to her parents but he's a criminal I, 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 if you're a criminal, I already dislike you. I do not view criminals as being rehabilitated. I do not feel that they are worthy of a second chance. Here we have uh, an image of Robert Stepp. Uh, basically, this is actually kind of, Normally, when you see Robert Stepp, he is like kind of by himself. Or he may be like in a police station. I think this is one of the few times, if not the only time, I can ever recall him being in a school setting. And as you can see here, there are a lot of students behind him. That that, that shows kind of how well Robert Stack was as an actor. He was able to keep on doing, you know, keep on talking about what was on the script while he had all this activity going on around him. You know, I give him a lot of credit for that. Here we have the actor, the actors who played Jenny and Curtis. They were on the motorcycle just prior to the attack. Here we have a side by side of Jenny Pratt and Curtis. Uh, yeah. So basically, I'm. It's sad what happened to Jenny. 
I feel that Jenny was, uh, you know, she was younger. She was slightly younger. I think Curtis, I think Jay, uh, Jenny was saying Curtis was roughly her age, but he was actually like two or three or even four years older than her. He was definitely older than what she was claiming to be that he was uh, when she would talk to her parents. Okay, here, Jenny was wanting to be a model when she grew up, and I'm guessing that these were some test photos that Jenny had taken of herself. Here's another one of those test photos. And then finally, we have Jenny Pratt. This was as, uh, this was her high school photo, if I remember correctly. It looks like, definitely looks like a high school photo, but I mean, oh my God, the 80s. Look at that hair, ladies and gentlemen. If anything, if anything really screams 80s, it's that hairdo, ladies and gentlemen. So these are the candidates. Now I'll have I'll have the finalists up right now. Okay, so the finalists the the there are only four finalists as I already let you know. Uh, I am doing I am kind of making a little bit of a change. I am no longer going to be doing the default uh, the default you know, lo G curse logo that you would normally see as a choice. I'm just picking four screenshots. So one of these screenshots can be possibly the winner in the next thumbnail. So, and the reason I'm doing that, I, I just want to give everybody a choice, uh, uh, the biggest cho choice possible, you know, for different scenes from unsolved mysteries. So let's get to it. Shall we? So here we go. So the first one, uh, this one, I, the reason I picked this is because I want to hit home how violence can really affect a person. Not only does it affect a person mentally, it can affect them physically. But here in this case, not only did it impact Jenny physically, it also left a long-term mental impact on her also. So that's why I picked this photo i wanted to show that everybody that you don't just heal after an attack it is a long road of recover to to recovery basically up next we have the piece of shit boyfriend curtis croft i think his name is like i said i can't recall what his last name is uh piece of slime the slime ball i have no problem calling him that he knows what happened he knows more than he is leading on Number three, of course, it's Robert Stack. Who else would it be? It's good old Robert Stack. He is, he was at a, uh, I'm not sure if this was a junior high or a high school, but he was at some sort of school. And I, like I said, I give him credit for being able to, uh, to, you know, be able to maintain character while all this activity was going on around him. And finally, we have Jenny Pratt from her high school photo. Uh, so, yeah, so those are your four finalists, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so let's turn this off. I feel that these four finalists are the best choices possible for this case. It gives a little bit of everything. You have Jenny Pratt when she was in high school prior to the attack. You have uh, the person who is at the center of this uh, of this assault. You have Jenny Pratt, you know, working through the uh, physical trauma, physical and mental trauma of what happened to her. And then you have everybody's favorite host. You have Robert Stack. So keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, these are your four choices. You can uh, pick one of them and whoever gets the most votes will be the thumbnail for the upcoming episode of Black Sight Files from Unsolved Mysteries, the case of Jenny Pratt. Okay, everybody, that is it for this video. I just want to say thank you to everybody who is going to take the time out of their day to vote. And as always, if you like what you watched and you would like to get more Unsolved Mysteries goodness in your uh, inbox, I guess you could say, or whatever it is that they call it on Facebook, feel free to click that subscribe button. And I will see you in the near future. My name is Jeff, a.k.a. Jeekers, wishing all a great day. And stay safe, everybody. Peace out.